Hey everyone, welcome back to this channel. Uh, another installment of Revolutions. Um, just what I've been spinning this week, basically. Um, it's Sunday today, so I've started with classical music, as per usual. A gift, a very kind gift from my, my good friend and VC brother, uh, Mr. Chris Cole. Last week, um, if you watched the installment, I was talking about this huge package that I got from Dom with records from Chris, Sean, Alex, um, Dave and Stunty, or which I've spoken about last um, in last video. I uh, don't, don't want to repeat things endlessly, but I got this very generous package. Um, and Chris Cole puts three or four records in there. I mean, one of them was this wonderful Schoenberg-esque um, slice of uh, serialism uh, British composers uh, but whistle cross and wood very melancholy sort of tone poems um, yeah quite avant-garde but but very palatable uh, and I love Argo it's one of my favorite labels uh, British label um, and I've got quite a few of, of uh, on that series on the Carlos Gilbenkin uh, foundation it was um, I think he was a, an Armenian businessman who set up a foundation in in Lisbon, in Portugal. But there's a British wing of it, seemingly, um, who you know released those those wonderful records from the 1950s onwards. So these composers from you know they're, they're 1950s composers basically. Um, and uh, whilst I'm on classical and talking about Chris Cole's. Uh, generous present he also sent me this one indian music the original udai shankar company um i've spoken about udai shankar before udai shankar was ravi shankar's older brother uh who was a in an indian and hindustani dance dancing sensation throughout the world toured the world several times and uh was a big inspiration on his uh, little brother Ravi uh, as Ravi Shankar followed him around the world and you know sort of fostered a sort of love of music through uh, his big brother and the music is obviously of that ilk they're ragas it's Hindustani music I love this stuff I'm I just I I don't know how to talk about this because I'm not qualified to talk about this, but um, it, it's it's just beautiful music, uh, so spirited and so yeah, touching and affecting music. So I will let you listen to it if you <laughs> if you're ever interested. Um, and staying on classical music. Um, I found this for a, a dollar in my local thrift um, yesterday, actually. Um, World Record Club. I, I did a, a whole video on World Record Club. Uh, it was a, a label from Melbourne, uh, Flinders Lane, Melbourne, and they released, well, they, they were sort of releasing um, with their own twist on covers um, and they were impressing um, records that were basically imported from from the UK uh, and a lot of classical stuff, which I love. So we've got Stravinsky, uh, Bizet and Ravel there. I mean, you know, you can't, I mean, Stravinsky, this is the, f the version of the Firebird here is, is fantastic. Um, okay, in a completely different style, there is a wonderful ambient electronic ethno world kind of record. Um, this is um, Earth Tones uh, with Kevin Nathaniel. Earth, to Earth, to Earth Tones. It's very hard to say, isn't it? <laughs> is a uh, LA based producer. Um, and here it teams with um, Kevin Nathaniel who was schooled in the art of the um, uh, and Nyunga Nyunga, which is a, a sort of a kalimba from Mozambique. Um, and um, 
it's a mixture between beautiful, eerie, ambient synth, atmospheric kind of yeah, tangerine dream esque, I will say, uh, with this African other layer of melody um, in the background. Uh, this came out on Isle of or oh, Temple of Jura, Isle of Jura Recordings, which is a label uh, was based in Australia, which is why I grabbed this. Uh, I was sort of uh, just you know seduced by the cover as we do, and then I sort of listened to the music and uh, I thought, wow, that's that's kind of nice. I'd, I'd like to I'd like to have that, and um, it's really great. Um, staying on sort of ethno world music, I will say, I mean, it sounds very, it sounds terrible saying world music, but music from other countries than US and England, basically. Um, here is a wonderful compilation. Um, A moi la liberté, early electronic rye, uh, Algeria, 1983, 1990. I was talking about a Rye compilation last week, um, Rye Rebels, and this is somewhat different. I, w I would say it, it, it is, as the name indicates, more synth-based um, and with probably lesser-known um, actors of the Rye scene in Algeria. So I explained last week, Rye is basically Algerian pop music um yes a, a comment that was left under my video said that yeah it emerged in the 1920s in algeria etc and it's an old tradition but the modern take on rye i.e this um the peak is between the the 80s and the 90s late 70s and that's what we've got here um, it's awfully cool music. I mean, this this comp you could do worse than grabbing this comp. It was released by Born Bad Records uh, a few years back, probably in 2022, I want to say, or something. Um, but you know, and it comes it comes with extensive liner notes. Just it's just a Born Bad always do such a beautiful job of releasing things and spotlighting musical styles that that need to be spotlight sp spotlit spotlighted um i would i would go online and just have a listen to because i can't really recommend you a track or two tracks to listen to it's a compilation uh but it's wonderful and um it's pop music it's algerian pop music with synth i mean you know what what else would you like a shout out to my good pal Sean, the Vinyl Dreamscape, who, uh, as part of the package I was speaking of, sent me this 12-inch, um, Deep House 12-inch. Now, that's not the cover of it, it's the insert, but I just put it there because it's cool. You know, like, why keep this inside when you can see outside the 12-inch um, the is that which is normal kind of a 12 inch if you if you listen to house or techno or those kinds of musical styles they're, they're very plain usually and the insert was that so i thought i'll just put it there at the front this is julian d'angelo with now normal um two-sided uh 12 inch i would call this deep house house music very percussive um just a banger really a, a great great tune um and from detroit so um it's great because sean lives in detroit and he just wanted to share music with me that was from where he comes from which is that's that's cool okay um and he also sent me this here in a very different style this is more i would call this more a psychedelic soul psych rock kind of um, uh, forgotten slice um, it's Fred E. Scott uh, which you can see here um, and he's accompanied by George Freeman on the bass and um, he well he engaged in meditation in the 70s and then returned to Detroit 
um, and recorded this, you know, very obscure, very under the radar, uh, couple of tracks. Yeah, very, very psyche, beautiful. Um, yeah, with a soulful sort of, I don't know. I don't know how to describe this. It's, it, it, yeah, it's psych soul, psyche soul, I reckon. Uh, no more, no less. Uh, very very hard to find by the sounds of it but reissued obviously uh, on natural records there we go um, Stunty sent me this 7 inch in the package as part of the package Pram fantastic Birmingham sort of experimental pop group this is the last astronaut great track very psychedelic infused with the spirit of crack rock a bbc radio uh, radiophonic workshop very sort of similar sounding in a similar sort of sound universe as say uh, stereolab you know for example if you if you like stereolab pram is not a million miles away and the the b-side is uh, cinnabar which is an instrumental track just superb, original, uh, and all is the lyric insert, and even the yeah, the original um, price sheet and everything. That's cool. Um, I've loved this. I've played this several times. It's beautiful. And since I was playing seven inch, I thought I'll just take out some some sevens uh, from my from my stack, and uh, I took out Spiral Scratch uh, by the Buscocks. I mean, what a classic. I mean, an absolute classic um, punk punk rock track with um, the great Howard Devoto on vocals, um, with this two-node guitar solo by um, uh, who's on on guitar? Obviously, Pete Shelley, <laughs> yeah, and still Steve Digger on bass. It's it's the Buscocks, but with uh, Howard Devoto on vocals before he left and formed Magazine. Um, I also took out my copy of uh, Walk On By by The Stranglers, uh, which is a superb cover. I think I like this way better than the Bird Back Rack original. Uh, with, uh, I think it was Dion Warwick that sang the original, but this is just so much, so much better in, 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 in so many ways. The B side is Old Codger, yeah. Uh, less memorable, perhaps, but very cool and since we're in the uh, a uh, black and white um, 70s singles I also took out my copy of the normal on mute um, TVOD and uh, obviously the absolute classic warm leatherette one of the founding tracks of electro pop you know um, just as important as craft work in some ways um, Okay, um, some pops, some, you know, left field pop. There was R. Stevie Moore, the, uh, the complete outsider artist that he, that he is. Um, yeah, very difficult to classify R. Stevie Moore. It's, this is a compilation, everything you always wanted to know about R. Stevie Moore, but were afraid to ask. <laughs> and I love that it's even... It's even listed in French. Tout ce que vous auriez euh, toujours voulu savoir sur A. Sivimo et que vous n'avez jamais osé demander. <laughs> Just love that. Um, this is a comp that came out in 1984. It's funny because it looks really like Record Store Day, doesn't it? A. Sivimo. <laughs> it's not. Um, and I would... I would classify this, mu this music as the bridge between Big Star and Frank Zappa. Like, somewhere in the middle, you have Ars TV, because it's a little bit of ad pop, a little bit of power pop, it's a little bit of Zolo, it's a bit of... This music is fucking crazy. Um, if you've never delved into uh, the world of Ars TV more, you're in for a treat. As a real, he has a real pop sensibility. He, he can craft a tune... He's not exactly the, the, the most skilled singer or musician, but what he does, he does super well. And uh, I think he's, 
is still seen to this day as as one of these sort of left field kind of artists. No, nobody talks about him ever. I mean, you know, like when did we talk about Ask TV more on the VC? Never. Um, likewise, for this group, we never talk about beat happening, do we? This is uh, you turn me on. Um, she's like the uh, the height of slacker pop of bedroom pop, really, just a superb record. Came out in 1992 uh, on, and this is a this is a, a reissue on Domino Records. Um, these dudes were just so influential in so many ways that they, um, it's just, it, it's, you know, very very, um, um, you know, it's Calvin jo Calvin Johnson is, is such. Like in American indie music, is such a huge presence, and yet it's almost a forgotten kind of a band, isn't it? Beat happening. Um, anyway, digressing. Um, speaking of a great American, couple of great American indie bands. I mean, you know, I always, always, always enjoy going back to this record. It's just to me, it's one of the best. US post punk or I don't know if you could call this post punk but yeah it's it's the uh, the American version of uh, in 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 the UK you you had like Joy Division and you know these kinds of bands in in America you had the feelings um it's just perfect this record crazy crazy rhythms um from yeah the boy with per per perpetual ner nervousness facila Loveless Love, just you know the, the the title track. Everybody's got something to hide. The uh, Beatles cover, just superb. Um, ben from, I think they were from New Jersey. I think from memory, uh, from from Hoboken, like uh, like Yolotengu. Um, and since we're in U.S. indie, of the. Uh, the 80s persuasion um i also played this a lot I, on my french channel i just did a video on um on um dream pop and noise pop so that sort of went into the video and so i just played this record quite a bit this week um galaxy 500 today the debut the classic debut uh dean damon and naomi you know unmistakable sound i mean really Fantastic, beautiful record, ethereal, dreamy, lush, um, sad, yeah, really melancholic. I mean, tugboat, you know, I don't want to stay at your party. I don't want to talk to your friends. I don't want to vote for your president. I just want to be a tugboat, cap your tugboat captain. I mean, everything is there. Every they've said everything. That's... <laughs> um, and whilst I was revisiting some noise pop, dream pop, shoegaze classics, I replayed my copy of Swerve Driver, Ray's uh, Oxford band from uh, from the early 90s with just very much in the mold of Ride and, you know, Slow Dive and all those kinds of bands, My Bloody Valentine, Swerve, Swerve Driver. Very, very few people talk about this band anymore, but they, they're great. The first Verve record, which is a shoegaze classic, A Storm in Heaven, absolute magni magnificent. Listen to uh, uh, Sail Away or, uh, uh, sorry, Slide Away, excuse me. Slide Away, beautiful. Catherine Wheel, Chrome, amazing records. And I was also replaying the Dorothy Cullen a bit. The uh, second LP, LC from 1981 superb as well just from start to finish anyway this is just a little digression uh, i'll stay with a couple more indie records here's a record that i played this week that i revisited beach house with bloom i love this record too i mean it's i mean uh, for me beach house is uh teen dream i mean that's my favorite beach house record but but very close second would be Bloom with uh, Myth and Lazuli and 
New Year. Just beautiful, beautiful record from 2012. I can't believe 2012. Can't believe where, where does the time go? This is 12 years ago, and. <laughs> Even a record has been on your shelf for 12 years and you think, what, what? Um, I listen to a lot of felt at the moment. I don't know why, but felt is really, it's kind of sound that I crave at the moment. This is uh, Ignite the Seven Cannons, uh, which came out in, I can't remember. Um, I want to say early 90s or something. I can't, I just really can't remember. It doesn't, it doesn't profoundly matter. Uh, no, oh, 1985, excuse me, 1985. Yeah. Um, contains the amazing Primitive Painters, which is probably felt greatest track, one of their greatest tracks. It's Lawrence and Liz Fraser just, just doing what they do. Magnificent, magnificent music. If you've never heard Primitive Painters by um, by Felt, you're in for a treat. Here is an Aussie record uh, from the um, the 80s. I think it's 1984. Classic Aussie record, uh, uh, garage punk, with some slight jazzy leanings. The Moodists, 30s calling. This is the band led by Dave Graney. Dave Graney, uh, he's, a, he's a local character. He's, he lives not very far from here. I've seen him lots and lots of times in town on the train. Like a couple of times I was even on the train, on the same train as he was, we, we, him and his wife. Um, and uh, this has got Mick Turner from the Dirty Three on the guitar. Claire Moore, I think that's his wife, the drummer, Claire Moore. I think that's... that's, that's I think I'm not sure anymore. Uh, I've got a. I, I know he's married to a musician, but I don't know. I, I can't remember if it's her. But there's this. You know, he's just a local dude. He's always very dapper. He's always wearing kind of a hat. He's got this pencil mustache on, and I've seen him gigs. Yeah, he's just a local. He's just a normal dude. But he made lots of really great records, and this is probably one of my favorite things that he's ever done. Yeah, Garage Punk, um, yeah, The Moodists, Melbourne Band. Um, here is a stunty gift, fantastic stunty gift, Shrig Back, uh, Sex Think One. I love Shrig Back, uh, UK post-punk band. Uh, I, think they were, I think they were from London, I, I might be wrong. Um, and... Um, this was sent as part of the package that Stunty sent me. Uh, it's a 12 inch of uh, one of their greatest singles. Um, just super dynamic, you know, almost on, on the cusp of punk funk, you'd say. Um, it's very dark cover, isn't it? Shrink back, yeah, fantastic. Um, all right, continuing with a touch of minimalism. Who doesn't need minimalism in their lives? Uh, Paul Drescher, a gift from Alex Diamond Marimba. Uh, this is Night Songs, Channels, Passing, Study for Variation, 1983. Very much in the mold of Steve Reich. These kind of like repetitive loops and patterns. Um, Alex thought that I might already have this record and no, I didn't have this record. I don't have any, didn't have any records by Paul Drescher before you sent this to me. Wonderful, wonderful sleeve, very sort of, <laughs> it's almost like he's on the cross really. I mean, you know, like it's, it's, it's somewhat biblical without wanting to be. Um, yeah, just lovely, repetitive, but also with a touch of, you know, this kind of forward thinking, avant-garde kind of a feel. Just lovely. I need to spin this again because I'm, I have not got the uh, familiarity to do, to actually talk about it in more detail, but I've played it a couple of times and I've really enjoyed it. And I was struck by, you know, how 
close in spirit to a record by Steve Reich it was. Um, this was a gift from Dom Alvin Curran. The record is called Fiori Chiari Fiori Oscuri. Okay. Uh, so light flowers, uh, dark flowers in Italian, in the text. Um, a lovely, again, um, a lovely avant-garde minimalist. Um, I mean, Alvin Curran, that's, that's, that's what he does. He does records that are in that kind of sort of sonic universe, um, working with what's at hand it says there i began making a piece with uh, for ocarinas toy pianos children's voices and bird sounds so you get the you, you get the gist it's it's whimsical and you know it's done really uh with um that kind of spirit of uh minimal um uh, minimalism that's what i want to say um yesterday i was at the thrift store and i got this for a, a dollar or so and i just gave it a chance uh marion anderson 18 spirituals with french group on piano i wouldn't say that i'd return to this very often but it was interesting for a dollar <laughs> I um, and i thought well you know i've played it this morning so i may as well show it to you um yeah it's gospel with i mean her voice is very it, it, it's it's an acquired taste <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> um here is a beautiful reggae dub reggae uh reissue that i got a little while back like a couple of weeks ago Aquarius uh, Herman Chin Loy one of one of the first dub albums uh, to emerge from from Jamaica Herman Chin Loy was a Chinese Jamaican uh, musician and this is not yeah it's not the same school of dub as say you know people like you know um lee perry or you know augustus pablo or king tubby or whatnot um it's more rootsy it's a more rootsy version of dub and it's certainly not as Im immediate in terms of like the impact you listen to a, a scientist record just hits you in the face with this big fat bass lines and and reverb that is typical of dub this is more yeah a studio creation than anything else uh, aquarius herman chin loy fantastic um here's a wonderful record that is rarely spoken about and i'm talking about this african marvel music from saharan whatsapp on the wonderful sahel sounds label that's run by um, a guy called uh, christopher kirkley and so because of the limited means of these people to record music um the sahel is a region that covers you know mali mauritania niger um algeria i, I guess it's kind of a in a in a broad way this is sub-saharan sub-saharan um africa in kind of sort of that sort of region sorry not very articulate but you know even it does say saharan there so you could you get the feel of what sort of region it's in these people would record the music on a cell phone or a mobile phone and um the guy who runs a label got them to send the music through whatsapp hence the name of the and then published them on bandcamp one by one and then started making compilations There's a couple of these that came out and the artists got obviously paid for those um through the um uh, through bandcamp obviously 
Um, and you've got a mixture of all sorts of music from griot tradition to um, even electronic music to traditional um, folk music from the from, from from whichever country these people are from. Um, it's just a really killer killer compilation. Yeah, yeah, I very highly recommend this. Um, beautiful, beautiful music. Uh, came out in 2022 all right that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this installment if not i'll try to reimburse you not uh, <laughs> um take care write me some comments because i like that all right love you all